everybody. This is Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop and our Sunday evening blog. Well, what we have for you this Sunday is a tutorial entitled VCarve Pro Adding Dimensions. How to basically mark up your actual program so that you can render uh, something similar to a blueprint. By no means is it, is it an engineered standard print by any, by any effect but it will give you some nice reference for those out there uh, I recently did a garden bench project well I'm trying to cater to both sides of the table here between the CNC group and, and I love woodworking myself so we're, we're also trying to put a little something out there so that the woodworking group can can have some dimensions to run off to build some of these projects okay well we're gonna discuss with you real quickly uh, I'll highlight the blog and then we'll uh, we'll get right to it. Not everybody's going to own, like we said, the CNC equipment. So this is, in fact, why we we will render out uh, a print for others to enjoy. Now, VCar Pro Aspire, I believe, Cut 2D. I only work with Vectrix, so I don't know about any other product. Why do it? What's to be gained? And how does it help you? Well, I have to watch every minute on my table because time is money and that is a fact so if a part can actually be fabricated quicker by hand than not using the machine well then that's what I do but if that's the case that particular job will have a folder in a file cabinet and we'll have basically marked up prints to go for that particular job alright what it does is it also saves your machine time, wear and tear on tooling, things of that nature, and you're you're going to have a hard you're going to have a hard copy backup. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pull in an image right now, and this is the one that we have chosen. Just bear with me for one minute. All right, and here we have, if you recall, we did. A camp chair uh, this past fall just before the holidays to share with all of you well this chair is the high back adult chair all right uh, we do also have a, a kids model which I'll make sure that we include a print in there for that as well all right well with the high back adult model to find your dimensions it's as simple as going into create vectors come down to your add dimensions to your 2D drawing you've got five options for this particular example we're only looking at the radius corners as well as the length dimensions alright well we'll start with our uh, we'll start with our radius now my corners here I already know for a fact they're all at 0.500 thousandths but for the example nonetheless that's what we're going to show all right now we see when we get to this corner right here there's a circle because what I can tell you is this let me zoom in here if I unclick him and I go back to my add dimensions and I try to go to click on him what is happening is this when I originally built this this particular high back adult chair to sit around a campfire with I ended up just taking a node and randomly I clicked on the node, I turned it to a smooth node, and I just, uh, I extended out the wands, which I can show you, I think, right here real quick. Okay, and basically you can see where this at one point was square. I ended up just dragging the wands on the nodes out. Well, we're going to do away with those real quick. I'm going to show you how to put an actual true radius corner in. In this case, I created a circle created a uh, draw circle make sure your radius box is clicked and then enter your dimension in this case this is five hundred thousandths we highlight him we want to drag him in so that our nodes are going to be touching our lines basically eyeball these the best you can great alright now come in highlight your circle come over to edit objects node editing and you see me do this a bunch of time. Right click, delete, right click, delete, right click, 
delete span. Now we're going to come down here and we're going to highlight the outside of the box. What I'm going to do is here is the arch that we want to work off of. Here is the one that we have. Come up in front of the one we want to work off of, just the titch. Right click, insert a point. Same thing up here. Right click, insert a point. Now you can delete this point. I'm sorry, delete the span and then delete the point. Same thing here, delete this point. Our nodes are just a little bit in front of our new arch. We're going to come over to Edit Objects. They're both lit up. Hold down your Shift key, click this arch, join your vectors with a straight. Uh, join vector with a straight line. All right, now, if we go back up to our Add Dimensions and we go to Highlight this, Oh, excuse me. We have to click the arch dimension. I'm sorry. If you highlight this, you now see that we're able to put our correct radius in. All right. I've basically gone, and this is what I have to go through when I give you guys and you ladies as well these uh, these projects away. I've got to go back and I've got to make sure that all the radiuses are clean. So there's a little bit of work involved, just so that you understand that. All right. Now, if we want to do the arch on one of these, same thing applies. I happen to use a 1.5 inch. You can create a circle, set it on the radius tab, set it at 1.5 inches, and do what we just did for this same corner. Alrighty. And this is basically all there truly is to marking these up. Left click. You can drag them out where you want them. I try not to go off the uh, the actual job mat, but that's okay. There we are. Okay, and if you don't like it because he did in fact, just hit Control Z, and you can uh, you can reshoot him. There. Oh my goodness. Well, we'll pull him in then. There we go. I'm not going to do the entire print with you, okay? But I will walk you through a little bit more here. I want my length. I want to know what the width of this is going to be. I'm going to come over and across. I'll pull him up. Now, this is probably my unsteady hand, but it's showing 11.964 or it could be how I cut this this job out. Round up to your nearest. In this case, this is 12 inches wide. I know it is because I've built a I've built a bunch of them. You could uh, you could hit Control Z and you could re uh, you could try to retake it again. Twelve point. Okay. All right. The other thing here that we have is. We're going to look at an angle dimension real quick, because down at the bottom, we have a notch in our piece. Let me zoom in on him, so we have, uh, we have some good, good visual understanding here. I'm going to start my set point at the peak of the, uh, the angle. Let me do it over here. I'm going to click, and then when I bring him over, I can adjust my span by moving my mouse up and down. And what it does is it ends up rendering this degree. Now, if I were to be doing this with hand tools, I would probably just throw in my speed square or, or something that would render, and I would do this at a 45 degree. Once again, we're doing this in CAD. So, yeah, it's, you know, we're talking CNC to hand tools here, but that is how the angle function does work. All right. Okay, 42 inches tall, I believe, is the number. But now, let me close that out. You get the general idea here of how to mark your parts up. Like I said, this is my unsteady hand on the mouse today. Okay. But that is basically about what is involved. However, what I did want to do is I want to take a quick moment. And I want to show you, now this is the bottom seat. I'll pull this in right now. 
and we'll just lay it right over the top of this one, okay? This is one that I've already marked up earlier. This is included. We're going to give you guys and, and you ladies as well. We're going to give you back links to the download section where you can uh, where you can pull these up. But let's say you want to take this image alone. Normally, we can render an image out of our toolpath tab over here in the corner. We can pull down preview toolpath or pass. I'm sorry. And that's what we would get, but we go, all right, where's the, uh, Steve, where are the measurements? Okay, well, we're going to show you how to do that right now. What you do is you'll come in, set your edit objects on selection mode, start your box down below, and highlight this whole thing. Highlight the whole darn thing, all right? Come over to your file. You're going to export this. Select selected vectors to SVG, scalable vector graphic. Alrighty, this is how I create all the blueprints for every one of you to uh, in, in the woodworking community. Okay, we're gonna save it. We'll put it in our documents. You can see it's already saved, so I'm not gonna go through that. Alrighty, let me get this out of the way, and let me get this out of the way, please, and just bear with me for one moment. What we're going to do is we're going to use this other wonderful program that we've taught you in the past, how to convert a raster to a vector image. And that is Inkscape. Inkscape should open up right here in the corner. Let's expand him. Now, Inkscape has got everything in the box. What we're going to do is we're now going to go up into the file box. We don't have to do anything to, the, to this particular print but this, this step right here. We're going to now save him as, keep him as his name, but instead of saving him as an Inkscape scalable vector graphic, an SVG file, what we're going to do is we're going to render him out as a PDF. To me, a portable, uh, yeah, excuse me, a portable document format is, is one of the most widely used documentation files, in my opinion. Uh, so that's how we're going to save him. Yeah, it already exists. So what we'll do is we'll now shut this out and what I'll do is I will come in and I will open him up let me drag him in and now we have a PDF file very clear very nice illustration here and if you do this you can attach this with little effort to any email and vice versa you know maybe another another buddy of yours has a uh, has some CAD software out there. They render you an image. This is how you can share them back and forth. But this is how I basically mock up all my uh, all my programs, uh, all the all the actual image files, anyways. That so that I can go and I can create a physical schematic or kind of a makeshift blueprint, if you would, for all of you who don't have the equipment. Okay. Well, stay tuned. Coming up this week, we've got more. Uh, the shout out on Friday probably touched base a little bit with that. I'm trying to keep the videos down. If any of you ever have any question, please, by all means, give me a shout. I'll get back to you as, as promptly as I can. You can reach us here, Steve at littlelittlewoodshop.com. I'd like to thank all of my uh, all of my subscribers, all of my followers. You ladies and gentlemen, you absolutely rock, and uh, I'm obviously feeling a little better. Thank goodness for that, but. Uh, again, thank you, thank you so, so much for your support, and uh, I look forward to bringing you more, okay? Stay tuned this coming week, because uh, that's just what we're going to do. All righty. Everybody, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a good time with you and yours, and uh, take care. Bye-bye.